Oh my god, that's good. That's such good coffee. Sorry. Oh lordy, you see my good coffee dance. All right. Hello, my Belpa Thousand Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. We are back with another Mr. Nightmare. This one's titled, Three Disturbing True Trucker Horror Stories. Ooh, I'm excited. Like, I, I've heard some trucker stories, man. Like, the old lady's dad, he, he, he drove trucks for a really long time, man. Like, a really, really long time. And he's got some, he's got some crazy stories. Some of them's not so horrible. Some of them's just some crazy ass stories. That's like you know, like uh, driving d during hurricanes, carrying like liquid, explosive shit in the back. All kinds of crazy stuff, man. I love hearing those stories. So if this is gonna be like actual horror horror stories, that I'm. I'm Let's go ahead and get in day story. Go ahead, turn them lights down low, put on something comfy, come up with something special. Let's get spooked up in here, Brit. I've been a trucker for close to 15 years now. This happened Damn. to me in 2017. I was driving an overnight haul through the Mojave Desert in California, headed for a destination in Arizona. I think I was delivering appliances, I don't really remember. It was pitch black darkness in every direction. The headlights on my semi were really dim at the time, and I had been putting off getting them fixed forever. Usually I couldn't tell the difference, but since there were basically no other cars on the road, it was much more obvious. I remember having to strain my eyes every few minutes to make out the road in the distance. That could have been a horror story in of itself. Fuck I was yeah. debating pulling over for a couple hours and waiting for sunrise, but I Nothing didn't want to waste my time. I desperately needed the money at the time, so I kept driving, even though it wasn't fully safe. And see, that that's the one thing that truck drivers have it hard like that, man. It is amazing money. It is good money. Like, but you have these quotas and these time frames that are just impossible. And, like, they don't want you going too fast, so they have, like, governors and shit that they can put in your truck to where you can only go so fast. Truck drivers have hard jobs, and the companies they work for make them dangerous. That's just how it is. Like, truckers, they have to meet quotas. They have to meet time frames. They, ha they, they have to have... The ability to do this stuff and have it done safely, but the company's not giving them the option to do it safely. You got 12 hours to make a 20 hour trip. No matter how you cut it, the math ain't right. You know what I mean? I figured since it was basically a straight line, it would be okay. I think it was about an hour before sunrise when I saw something approaching fast in the distance. Worried about hitting an animal, I slammed on the brakes. As my truck screeched to a stop, I realized what was in front of me, a car with its hazards on. The weird thing was that it was in the exact middle of the road, like literally on the double yellow. What was even weirder was that the passenger door was Time wide to go. open. Time to go. My truck stopped Time maybe to go. a foot before hitting it. Time to go. Not to toot my own horn, but I'm a pretty fearless guy, and I know my way around a bar fight. Because of this, I wasn't really scared when I saw the car. I was more curious than anything. I thought maybe someone needed a jump or something. So I reversed the semi and pulled over. Any other feller out there, or any, or ladies, I don't know. Maybe you want a beard or a mustache. Whatever, whatever. I, equal opportunist, alright? Is there anyone out there with facial hair that randomly throughout the day you'll just pull like one of your old lady's long ass hairs out and it's like how does this happen why does it happen I, I i tell her she's got medusa hair because i'll wake up and i swear it's like her hair is like snakes trying to like 
take over your body. I thought about throwing some flares down, but decided... Shit's worse than a golden retriever, bro, I'm telling you. I don't know how the hell this motherfucker got hair left, man. I did... None. None. Motherfucker walking around like cousin it. It's crazy. It ...against it, since I hadn't seen a single other car on the road besides this one. I got out of my truck and made my way over to the car. It was a warm, still night. I remember thinking how strange it was that there was almost no wind. It was also really quiet that night. The faint click of the hazards was the only sound in what felt like the entire desert. I got a little closer to the car. I vividly remember that it was a new looking red Ford Fusion. I approached the car a little cautiously. Like I said, the passenger door was wide open. I walked around the car and stopped in my tracks. Do you have a gun? It was completely empty. I made sure of it too, checking the back seat and anywhere someone might be laying down. There was literally no one inside. All of a sudden, I was much less sure about the situation. I was expecting someone to need help of some sort, maybe even someone who took a nap in a really dumb spot. I certainly wasn't expecting this though. The car was literally empty. I'm gonna trust him. I cast a few glances over my shoulder. Could be someone in the desert a lot more behind a bush. Now. I kept whipping my head around, looking in every direction. I felt like someone was gonna charge me or something. The problem was, it was so dark gotcha. that I couldn't see that far in front of me, except for what was lit up by my truck's headlights. It was eerie. I waited a while longer, thinking about getting back in my truck. Man. I've been in a place like that. Uh, we was visiting my papa's family in uh, San Francisco, and it was my first time getting to go out there with him. And we went and just seen all kinds of different things, that, like deserts and stuff like that, things I just never had gotten to see before. And I remember driving back and it being so dark out that it was like blacker than black like i don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever it was like it was so dark that the blackness all around you wasn't even like darkness it was just like negativeness like it was just i i don't know how else to explain it but it is really creepy I, um... truck and forgetting about this whole thing someone was out there somewhere Against my better judgment, I decided to keep investigating. I looked inside the car, but everything seemed completely normal. The key was even in the ignition, although the engine was turned off. I got back out of the car and made my way over to the trunk. Might as well have a look, I figured. I went to open it, but it wouldn't budge. Locked. I grabbed the key out of the ignition and unlocked the trunk. Still though, the thing wouldn't budge. It was jammed from the inside somehow. I Is opened the potty? back door and tried getting at the trunk through the back seat. To my surprise, it actually opened. There were three squished garbage bags back there, along with a rope that was tying the trunk closed. I remember glancing one more time over my shoulder before reaching for them. The coast was clear. I must have been within five inches from one of the bags when the loudest gunshot I've ever heard rang out into the night. I slammed my head on the roof of the car in shock. I didn't even think. I threw the keys on the front seat and got out of the car as fast as I could. As I was climbing into my semi, I heard a grungy voice yelling in the distance. He yelled hey a bunch of times, and his voice seemed to be quickly approaching. I scrambled into the semi and turned it on. I threw it in gear as fast as I could. I remember cursing a bunch of times as the engine initially stalled, and that's when I saw it. As my truck began pulling out, I saw a person standing at the trunk of the car. It was a short, husky guy with red hair. He was wearing overalls and shin-high boots. In his left hand, he was holding a small shovel. In his right, though, was an old-looking hunting rifle. We locked eyes for a few seconds as my truck began to drive past him. He didn't move. I remember him not looking crazy or anything. He had this worried look on his face. As I passed him, he dropped his shovel and started waving his hands. He yelled wait a few times, but I wasn't staying there another second. Right. As I drove away, I watched in the rearview mirror as he ran after my truck for a few seconds before sprinting back to his car. It was clear he wanted me to stop, but there was absolutely no way I was going to do that. I stepped on it, 
pushing the semi much faster than I should have. I drove for like five minutes and started to think I was in the clear, but then I saw headlights fast approaching behind me. I remember feeling more scared than oh, I've ever shit. felt in my entire life. I called the police and told them what happened to the best of my ability. That's when the car was basically right on my tail. It started honking like crazy at me. I honestly didn't know what to do, so I just kept driving, praying to God he wouldn't try and ram me. After like 15 minutes of this, he cut in front of me and hit his brakes, forcing me to slow down. I was just about to crash into him when finally some flashing police lights appeared ahead. The Ford veered off to the right and sped into the desert, disappearing from sight. I pulled over and waited for the officer to show up. I frantically told him what had happened, but the useless cop decided to get a report from me rather than chase the guy down. I was so pissed about that. Sounds that sounds about fucking right. I told the guy like twice that he could probably catch up to him if he left now. The cop told me not to worry and that they'd do a thorough search as soon as backup arrived. He sent me on my way and said they'd call me if they ever had an update for me. They never did. Of course not. None of my buddies have a story this crazy, and I've told it more times than I can count. I know what you're probably thinking. That guy was definitely burying bodies. That doesn't really explain why he had such a small shovel, or why he tried to follow me. The bags in his trunk were also too small for that, although some of my buddies think he might have done some dismembering. For my own sanity, I like to think that he was burying some other kind of animal. Maybe putting a diseased dog out of its misery, or some dangerous snakes. I really have no idea. Either way, I've some never been totally comfortable kids. driving through deserts late at night after this experience. That all sounds fucking horrible, bro. What's wrong with you, bro? Don't be, don't, no, 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 no. I would have ran over him with the semi truck. I'm sure you've seen some of the more modern videos online where truckers will document their daily routines and provide yeah. tips for each other. Or maybe you haven't. But yes, I have. being as I'm on the younger side in this industry, every time I open TikTok or YouTube shorts, that's all I see. I won't get into it, but I had to drop out of a pretty prestigious university for some personal reasons and people always tell me I could have been more than a trucker. It's honestly not a bad gig though. I've been making deliveries for north of two years. Obviously, the only strenuous part of the job is the long hours. You can never truly gauge how the isolation will affect you without experiencing it firsthand. My only advice would be to make peace with whatever demons might be lurking in your subconscious, because they'll definitely eat at your brain in the lonely hours. That's what happened to me, anyway. This happened to me three months after getting employed by my first company. I was basically as new in this trade as one could get. I was driving from southern New Jersey to Lafayette, Indiana, a 12-hour drive. 12 hours driving might not seem that crazy, but factor in the fact that I just completed an 8-hour trip, and that should put things into perspective. I wanted to get deliveries done as quickly as possible, so I opted to drive through the night. I'd get to Lafayette just before 3 a.m. Things were going smoothly. There were virtually no other cars on the road, so I was able to push the semi a little faster than normal. About halfway through the drive, I remember reaching down at the center console to chug a Red Bull, but there weren't any. Of course, I had forgotten to restock my truck after completing my previous delivery. Hey, I after bet that happens, my dashboard a few it's fine. times, it's fine. I groaned in frustration, Fuck. knowing I'd have to stop somewhere. All I wanted was my damn Red Bull, my monster. I like to mix them up. Makes me a red moonster. With balls like a bull. Turns me into a red demon with wings. There was nothing I hated more than having to make stops during my drives. I might be unique in this, but... Yeah, you don't... I mean, it takes time off of you. And then sometimes you get phone calls like, Hey, why was you stopped here? Bro, I had a shit. I always get exponentially more tired when my vehicle is immobile, Even if I'm only stopped for like 20 seconds. After glancing up at the navigation, I figured I had no choice. Either fall asleep on the road, or stop and get an energy drink. In my brain, those options were pretty much equivalent. Reluctantly, I pulled into the first service stop I saw. I had literally no clue where I was, probably somewhere in Ohio at this point. Too hey. late I realized this wasn't actually a service stop. It was what looked like an abandoned gas station and a repurposed convenience store. 
I'm not sure if there's any better way to describe it. Either way, it looked like there was another quick stop store not far up the road, so I figured I'd go there if anything. I parked the semi and made my way over to the first convenience store. To be completely honest, I was expecting one of two things to happen. Either the place would be open, or the door would be locked. You can imagine my surprise then, when the door swung open into a pitch black store. I looked around, hoping maybe I'd get lucky and there would be a drink or snack left behind. Just before I was about to turn around, my eyes adjusted to the darkness, and I picked up on a faint glow emanating from the corner of the room. I made wow. my way over to it, and the glow turned out to be coming from a back room of some sort. Curiosity got the better of me, and I opened the door slowly. To my pleasant surprise, there was a plugged-in refrigerator against the wall. Eagerly, I opened the door, but found nothing. Literally nothing. The shelves had literally been removed like the whole appliance had been gutted. As I was shutting the door, I was 90% certain I heard a clatter from the main room, like something hitting the floor. I just froze a for a good it's 10 just seconds. A rat. It's just a rat. I imagined it, there was no way. Quietly, I walked back into the main room and looked around. Nothing. Part of me wanted to keep investigating. I didn't have time for this, though. I walked out the entrance door and basically <laughs> jogged to the right? other shop. It was open, thank God. I paid for my drink and made it back to my truck. Something about this whole stop felt... wrong. I needed to get back on the road as soon as possible. I took one last glance at the abandoned store and noticed the door was now open. I was 100% positive I had shut it behind me. It wasn't my job to figure out what was going on here though, so I started the engine and merged my semi back onto the highway. The caffeine started kicking in and snapped me out of my tired haze pretty quickly. My mind began to wander, and I started thinking about how bizarre that whole thing had actually been. It's weird, I guess man. a squad or an abandoned building wasn't the strangest thing in the world, but my brain couldn't explain it that happens. refrigerator no matter what theory I thought of. I tried to forget about it and kept driving. It was then that I started noticing weird movements in the curtain behind me. Sweat started dripping down my forehead. I watched in the rearview mirror as the curtain seemed to billow and move, even though I didn't have the air on. I thought the worst. There was someone in my truck. Fuck yeah, there is. You're gonna die. I didn't die. have any weapons on me or anything, so I discreetly punched in the nearest police station on my phone. The drive there was the most tense and horrifying 20 minutes of my life. I kept imagining that person reaching out to grab me or trying to crash my truck. Finally, I approached the police station. I stopped the semi as close as I possibly could get and basically ran over to the police station. In seconds, my truck was surrounded by police, and after I opened the back, what I saw will stay with me for life. The police pulled out three homeless looking people, two men and one woman. They were wearing rags and were wrapped in nasty looking blankets. One of the men was armed with two switchblades. All three of them refused to talk, but stared menacingly at me as they were getting cuffed. I have no idea what they wanted. I don't think I'll ever know. It's probably best that you don't know, huh? Fuck that shit, homie. My name is Kevin. I've been a trucker for varying companies for the better part of 15 years now. Things Hell have yeah. become pretty routine at this point. Pick up the goods and materials, verify them for accuracy, On and deliver the them as instructed. Again. We're not yes, paid by the hour, the so efficiency is the most important thing in this line of work. And I'm happy for someone like I'm me who's been doing this forever, I like to think I can outwork all these young room. guns that are snapping these jobs up. This isn't always great, though. Usually I push myself to the absolute limit when it comes to functioning on barely any sleep. Four years ago, I was working for a where- you Gotta get that IV, drip, bruh. Need that vitamin B's. Warehouse based in North Dakota. For anyone who doesn't know, North Dakota is one of the flattest states, which makes trucking a little easier. This also meant that skipping out on a few hours of sleep could mean the difference between employment and getting the sack. It was a chilly Tuesday morning in May. The beginning of the week meant that more loads needed to be shipped, which meant more work for me. I wanted to knock it all out in one shot, so I traced my route into Montana accordingly, planning on not stopping even once to sleep. I hit the road a few hours after lunch, expecting to reach my destination very early the next morning. I pushed the semi as much as possible, 
doing maybe a couple over the speed limit. It was getting late, and I remember rubbing the crust from my eyelids as the clock ticked past midnight. Oh, that sucks. I was having trouble keeping my eyes open, but I only had about an hour left in this drive, so I gritted my teeth and kept going. My buddy Tristan, who was also a trucker, introduced me to smelling salts when I first started out. If you don't know, smelling salts are basically some kind of crystals in a little bottle. One sniff and you're wide awake. You had to be careful though. Too many back-to-back -back uses could be dangerous. Or at least that's what Tristan told me. They burn your nose a little bit, but whenever I needed a boost, I'd reach for the smelling salts first. This was one yeah. of those times. I took a big whiff and shot my head back, my reflexes taking over. I felt the adrenaline course through my body and I hoped the feeling would last the rest of the drive. A half hour shot by and I was really struggling. Yep. I felt myself start to doze off and the blare of my truck drifting into the shoulder jolted me awake. This was getting dangerous, I thought. I had to pull off. I was all alone on the highway, but there was nowhere to pull off. There was just woods on either side of me. Oh, that's I awful. slowed the truck down, searching desperately for somewhere to pull over. At this low speed, my headlights pierced through the darkness and I was able to see a lot more. As I looked around, I saw something that confused me. There was a purple dress lying in the middle of the road. What the hell? I thought, rubbing my eyes. Hey, it happens. Was I hallucinating? I blinked like six times just to make sure I wasn't going crazy. It was real. I approached the dress with my truck and stared at it as I rolled by. In hindsight, this should have been more of a red flag, but I think I was just too exhausted to process what was going on. About 200 or so yards away, I passed a pair of shoes. Now I was starting to freak out. What the hell was going on? I passed the shoes, praying to God there would be a place to pull off. I'll tell you what's going on. He actually fell asleep a while back, and he's done wrecked into a tree, and he's just laying there, and it's all just a dream that he's having. Soon. My old man, David, was a super religious guy, so I clutched his old cross and hoped he would come through for me. A little further up the road... I saw a bunch more random clothing, some of which looked like little kids' clothing. This time, I stopped the truck. The panic started to set in. Something was very, very wrong. I sat in the driver's seat with the truck at a standstill. I was expecting something to happen, but it never did. So, I did what my instincts told me to do. I stepped out of the truck and went to inspect the clothing. I still remember the feeling of the chilly morning air piercing my skin, which definitely helped my exhaustion. I approached the pile as cautiously as I could. It was indeed kids' clothing. It looked like there were both boy and girl pieces of clothing in the pile. Maybe someone just lost their suitcase. I looked around into the woods, but I couldn't see much of anything in the darkness. I had my head on a swivel, worried that this was some kind of trap. I decided it was not my business to figure out what was going on, so I made my way back to my truck. I don't know. Just then, I heard a crunch from the left. I whipped around, trying to see what was there. I stood there, waiting to hear another sound. After about 30 seconds, there was another crunch, but this time from the opposite side of the road. My survival instincts kicked in, and I sprinted towards the truck. I jumped into the front seat, but just before I slammed the door, I heard a child's scream ring out. Nope. I froze my heart bursting out of my chest. I was caught in a crossroads. I wasn't nope. gonna fight some random people in a pitch black woods, nope. but I couldn't just abandon some helpless kids either. Before I could make a decision- I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I, I would've. I have watched too many of these fucking videos and I would've dipped. I don't give a fuck. Cause I'm telling you right now, more than likely, it was a young lady screaming. And like it, it's, it's all, it all, it's, a, it's, it's a fucking setup, bro. Like, no, don't trust it. Drive away. Almost identical child screaming. This thing, deuce, call the cops. Without thinking, I turned the truck on and pointed its nose toward the spot in the woods where I heard the noise. My headlights lit up about 30 yards into the woods. There were three or four people, one of whom was holding a massive speaker. They ducked behind a couple trees as my truck lit them up, but I had exposed them for just enough time to make out what they were doing. They hid from the light before I could really make out any distinctive features, but I swear on my old man David's grave, they were holding up a speaker, 
trying to lure me into the woods with a fake kid screaming. Told you. I was just in shock. I just sat there, Told staring you. at the trees those people had just hid behind. I reached for my phone to call the police, but before I finished dialing, I heard a thump from the body of the truck. Someone had thrown something from the other direction. I was done. I turned back to face the road and slammed on the gas. As I sped off, I could make out a person on the other side of the road. He shouted something I couldn't understand before launching something at the truck that cracked the glass of my passenger side window. I drove the final hour in silence. I was too scared to process what had just happened, but there was no way in hell I was stopping to sleep in those woods. Fuck no. I completed my delivery and then knocked out. I must have slept for 10 hours straight. When I woke up, the first thing I did was call the police, who told me they'd investigate those woods and give me any updates. I then thought about the whole thing and how stupid I was to get out of my truck. I should have just minded my own business. But the thought of some kids being kidnapped or worse was just too much for me to ignore. To this day, I still have no idea what those people were trying to do. I don't know why they didn't just rush me when they had the chance, or what they were planning to do to me if I ran out in the woods after the kids screaming. In all my years of being a trucker, nothing has ever come close to being as strange or downright terrifying as this experience. Yeah, fuck that, man. Alright. Oh, I really enjoy Mr. Nightmares, man. He comes in clutch, bro. Like, whoo, have my balls tightened up on the whole damn thing. All right. I really enjoyed today's video. If you guys enjoyed today's video as much as I did, please go down there, leave a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. While you're down there, if you want, go on over, slap that subscribe button, become part of the Bill for a Thousand Nation. We do some crazy stuff here. If you want to know when that crazy stuff happens, ding that bell. It might work for you. It might not. It probably won't. But if it do, if, if it do, jump in on one of my premieres, go over in the live chat and be like, hey, Bill, I just want you to know those dings, man. I have never felt so special as I feel when you ding me. Because you know how to ding me right. I'm like, hells yeah, I do. Leave a like and dip. That's all you got to do. If you really want to be a part of the B5 Nation even more than what you are here on YouTube, think about going over and joining the Discord. Or you're growing constantly over there. It's amazing. I'm loving every freaking moment of it. And if you really want to support the channel, think about going out and check, going and checking out. There we go. Think about going and checking out the B5 Nation store. Like we got some really good stuff. Nice quality. I enjoy it. And I designed everything. Like it's my design. It's my brain. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Man, Mr. Nightmare. Ooh. Make me this no. Mm -mm. <laughs>